Uh, another major deal broke this weekend. Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway bought Dominion Energy's natural gas asset, assets. Price, at, price there nearly $10 billion. Yahoo Finance's editor-in-chief Andy Serwer and Jared Blickery are here to break this one down for us. Uh, Jared, also, I saw that this announcement came as Dominion and its partner Duke Energy abandoned their plans for that $8 billion Atlantic Coast Pipeline project. Uh, before we jump into the Buffett deal, what happened with that pipeline? Well, I think if you analyze the long-term economics of the deal, they just don't have the cash on hand to complete it in an efficient manner. you got to have strong hands managing the energy business right now. And Dominion has been doing rather well this year for an energy company. Just take a look at the stock. It's actually down 2% in the pre-market, had been up as much as 20. But here's what they've done on a year-to-date basis. And you can see just treading water here while a lot of energy companies underwater. That is because they are in the midstream operation, which tend to be insulated uh, from the price movements in crude oil on the upstream side, getting it out of the ground, and also on the downstream side, Turning it into uh, turning it into refined products. So, you know, if you take this whole and whole, Berkshire Hath Hathaway hasn't had a deal of this size in four years at just shy of ten billion dollars. Really, only seven percent of their hundred thirty-seven billion dollar cash stash. But I think it does mean a lot. This is Greg Abel's deal. He's vice chairman, and Andy can speak as to him more than I can. He's interviewed him several times, but uh, Abel largely seen as a successor to Warren Buffett. All right. Thanks, Jared. Yeah, Andy, want to get your thoughts on this. So, you know, Buffett opening up his $137 billion war chest to make this deal during this time. Does this make sense to you? Warren Buffett, where have you been? Um, <laughs> a lot of people have been waiting for him to make a deal. And of course, you know, people have been criticizing him. He didn't step up. He missed March 22nd. You know, people always like to, uh, do a little Monday morning quarterbacking when it comes to uh, Warren Buffett, I think. But uh, this is a, you know, this is not a huge deal, as Jared said. I mean, ten out of the hundred thirty-seven billion, it is in their wheelhouse, though, particularly with Greg Abel in the energy business, and it is also sort of a hallmark deal for Buffett. It's extremely opportunistic because, as you guys were just saying, you know, the pipeline deal fell apart, and they had to cut the dividend because of that. So. This, you know, is Buffett really stepping in and sort of filling the breach? It's also um, worth noting, I think, that his quote is on the press release rather than Greg Abel's. So it sort of really indicates that, you know, I'm putting my own uh, fingerprints on this deal. Buffett turns 90 on August 30th, if you guys want to mark your calendars. So, um, you know, he's still very much in the game and uh, not the mega deal. But a deal nonetheless, he's got some a situation in Germany that he's got to cl clean up with precision cast parts, though. It's a little scandal over there. So, you know, there's it's never a dull moment in Omaha. Danny, is this uh, Buffett saying at least for the next, let's say, 50 years, the primary sources uh, of energy in this country will be natural gas and oil? Keep in mind, he, you know, he also uh, played a key role in the Occidental deals and this him not necessarily being sold on electric and wind power. Yeah, I mean, I th think if you ask him, he would say, you know, sure, yes, yes, and yes. I mean, we're going to be transitioning to renewables, but in the meantime, you know, oil and gas is not dead. And of course, there's been so much disruption and dislocation in that business. I mean, it's rebounded off the, those really abysmal lows, but still, you know, not doing so great. And obviously, we have just so much excess capacity. And, you know, gas is obviously a better place to play than, than oil and, of course, coal. So I think that makes sense. And, you know, they could end up being you know, one of America's, if not the biggest oil and gas force in this country, just in terms of their expertise and in terms of their assets. So, you know, this is a place where I think you're going to continue to see them um, doing deals, particularly with Greg's, Greg Gable's expertise. Hey, Jared, what do you think this means for the overall oil and gas industry? Are we, are we going to see more deals happen? And if so, any possible candidates that you see? I think the entire Permian region is up for grabs right now. A lot of these smaller companies are going to be divesting. Also, some of the majors like Exxon and Chevron, they're going to be getting rid of some of their non-core operations. They've already been doing that. So is Royal Dutch Shell. They're slimming down. And the two majors, the two big majors in the United States want to be in the Permian. So, you know, back in the day, Warren Buffett penned an op-ed during the great financial crisis. He invested in banks. It was kind of the all-clear sign. Is this something similar for the energy industry? We'll have to see, but it does send a signal, I think. 
All right, Jared Blickery, Andy Serwer, thanks a lot, guys. Hey, investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well, then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up-to-the-minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance, and information on how to manage your money every day, wherever you are.